Welcome back everyone. Let's go ahead and talk about none other than one of my favorite phones I've ever used as a main device and actually one of the only iPhones I think I've ever used or any main phone that I've ever used that I bought brand new with the intent of actually using it. Now with the iPhone 11 Pro and when I say that I mean actually using it as my main device versus just using it to review. Now with this device the iPhone 11 Pro it came out in 2019 and I want to get this out of the way. There are so many things about this phone that I miss and I don't even know why the iPhone 12 Pro that I use you know it should be better in every single way but I still think that my iPhone 11 Pro is like a better device in some areas now, if you want to pick up this phone or any other device that I'd recommend this here links will be down in the description you can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time now on the front of the iPhone 11 Pro you can see we still have that 5.8 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display and as I stated before this was a very good panel at at that time and it still is a pretty good panel i really don't think there's that much to complain about i think the notch and probably the lack of you know 120 hertz or 90 hertz or whatever that is kind of a disadvantage in this day and age but again you have to consider the fact that no other iphone has that capability either so it's really not that big of a deal and i'm not really complaining about it too much and even when i use it i, I really didn't care about it that much at that time but the fact that the 12 pros don't have it either is kind of an annoyance you still have that notch with face id up front which i love and it's beautiful but on top of that you still have very little bezel around the whole entire display too and as i said before i mean this panel for sure is still timeless in so many different ways now you have that stainless steel chassis around the whole entire you know body of it which feels really good the lightning port on the bottom and on the back we have that frosted glass back which still feels so good arguably it feels better than what my iphone 12 pro brought which i just never really understood why that happened but the iphone 11 pro the body the feeling of it is still an amazing amazing asset for sure and it is one of the reasons why I would recommend picking up this phone is because of the way it feels in the hand. Now you also have that triple camera setup on the back as well which we'll get into in a second but when you look at this phone and when I felt this phone I was just so happy about the way it, it was just feeling the way it was looking and even now I still think this phone holds up extremely well in the body standpoint so if you're picking up this phone and you plan on using it you're definitely not going to feel like it's a cheap phone or anything like that it's not even two years old yet so you're definitely not going to get that vibe from it so in terms of the body and the camera and everything that pretty much covers it up in terms of an exterior standpoint but now let's go ahead and hit on the camera a little bit more in detail so it had that triple camera setup on the back a 12 megapixel wide angle lens a 12 megapixel telephoto lens and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor now again this was one of those devices that it used as a main device for uh, for like a year or since i owned it actually a little bit over a year and this camera is one of those devices that is just so predictable and it's so just you know what you're getting with this camera with a lot of other phones you just don't know how it's going to perform indoors or outdoors or you can kind of get an idea sometimes the photos will look really really good in the same conditions and sometimes not i did not get that vibe from this camera or really any iphone camera that's one of its biggest strong points and with this camera especially when i would go ahead and just go anywhere and say photos or videos there were a ton of videos and photos that i took took on my channel you know throughout all these videos even my second channel of just video straight from this phone and I really liked it it's super predictable I loved having that telephoto lens which is so funny because I ended up using that way more than I used the ultra wide sensor even though I like having an ultra wide sensor more so those lenses that you have are future proofing yourself like crazy I think that was a really good improvement from the iPhone XS at that time by having that triple camera setup and if you get this phone today if you get this phone next year I really don't see cameras improving really like an insane amount anytime soon if you look in the past from iPhone to iPhone even if you pick up something like an iPhone 10s camera that's still pretty okay for now but very soon that's going to be outdated as long as you have these three camera setups I think you're going to be okay for the most part so in terms of the back camera 4k at 60 1080p at 240 well, I don't know why you'd want to do that but you have that capability so this camera for sure thumbs up for me on the back and even on the front of this front camera is still extremely good you have the ability of doing 4k at 60 on the front as well and as I said before that is a huge humongous asset when you pick up a device like this you're not going to feel like it's outdated in any way in terms of the camera we're still only stuck at 4k at 60 for at least the foreseeable future i don't see us going to 8k on the front anytime soon and the quality of this front lens is still extremely good so in terms of the camera standpoint you are getting a very solid camera for sure on both the front and the back so in terms of the camera standpoint 
I will say thumbs up for me for sure. This is a very solid camera in 2021. Now moving on to, again, two of my favorite areas of this type of device. I think this, you know, phone is going to last for such a long time. It's not even funny. This thing had that Apple A13 Bionic chip inside of it. And there were actually a lot of devices that Apple released with this specific chipset. Some iPads, I think some other devices too. I don't really remember. But with that being said, I mean, this device is going to last as long as those devices and Apple isn't going to cut it short. So I feel like this device is going to last a pretty long time in terms of that. But on top of that, the software longevity and the software updates, when I got this phone, I really only had one problem with it. And it was a software issue where it wouldn't reboot properly like once in a while. It was probably like once every two, three months I had to reboot my phone. And for some reason, it wouldn't reboot properly. I would have to like hold it down an extra long amount of time and kind of, you know, flutter around with the buttons. And eventually it got through. And other than that, I had a very stable experience probably in the beginning with the first two, three weeks, like every other device you have problems. But after that, I had a very stable experience with it and I was extremely happy about it. So that is a really important thing to keep in mind. If I picked up this phone and there were problems left and right for the whole entire year I was using it, then that'd be different. But that's not really the case. I had a really stable experience with it. And that is a really huge thing to say. And the fact that this thing is going to be lasting for an insane long amount of time, you can pick up this phone today. You can pick up this phone next year. You can even pick up this phone like two years from now, and it's still going to be lasting for quite a bit of time in terms of software. I mean, I see this thing probably ending off probably like 2024, give or take a year or two. So even with that being said, this one's going to last a very long time. Time. It's not ending anytime soon. So in terms of software, that's huge. But in terms of battery life, this was another huge asset of this phone that I just can't believe how good this battery life was. It had a 3,046 mAh battery and you had wireless charging, you had all that good stuff. But the better thing was, was that this was the first time on a device where I just didn't feel the need to have like worry about the battery life all the time. I think the phone that came pretty close to it was probably the iPhone 7 Plus, but every other iPhone I've ever owned, I've always had to kind of keep in the back of my mind, especially my iPhone 6 Plus and my iPhone 10. Those were devices I had to like get a battery case for and stuff. And this device, it was so good. I think it's the best battery life I've ever had on a phone, including my iPhone 12 Pro. On iOS 13 on my iPhone 11 Pro, I was getting better battery life than my iPhone 12 Pro right now on iOS 14. So get, take it as you will, but that was a humongous asset that I had on the iPhone 11 pro the battery life is amazing and i test a lot of phones i can definitely tell you the 11 pro has really good battery life for sure so in terms of those two things probably the best reasons why i'd recommend picking up an iphone 11 pro in 2020 now ending it off with the performance this device has that apple a13 bionic chip inside of it with four gigabytes of ram and this was another area of this device that was just so dominated it was just dominated every single thing i've ever wanted to do with it i was editing a bunch of videos on this thing throughout you know the year that i used it if i was on the go and for some reason i didn't have my macbook or i couldn't bring it with me i could always rely on my iphone of at least being a stable device, you know, not being finicky, not being glitchy, not having like random issues all over the place. And I was able to just do whatever I wanted to do with it. Now, I hate editing videos on my phone, but it was, you know, it had the processing power. So it was kind of nice knowing that I had that capability if I wanted it to. And anytime I played any heavy intensive games or if I was, you know, doing a bunch of random stuff like this phone, I don't have to worry about the performance. And to be honest, even phones like an iPhone 10 or iPhone 8, I really don't even have to worry about the performance of those either but this device's performance for sure is very stable very predictable and it's extremely good now if you try to compare it to the 12 pro i did find that the 12 pros are just a little bit faster like I, i'm talking like such a minor difference that it's not even like i would not even think about upgrading and honestly the difference that i saw you could probably get it in like a software update if there was like a difference between one software version and the other it's probably like that big of a difference between the 12 pro and the 11 pro now ram is a little bit different but even then like i found that the iphone 11 Pro is killing the iPhone 12 Pro in the beginning with in terms of the RAM management. So that's another pretty important thing to say. But I think when it comes down to the performance standpoint, really whatever you're going to do on the iPhone 11 Pro, you are going to have a very stable experience. You're not going to feel like it's outdated. You're not going to feel like it's, you know, can't handle everything you throw at it. It's still going to be an extremely good phone when it comes down to the performance in 2021. So 
to kind of sum up the video and to answer the question, should you go and pick up an iPhone 11 Pro in 2021? Well, this is what I'll tell you. And this is what I always say. This phone is still completely worth it. It's not even two years old. It's arguably sometimes a better device than even an iPhone 12 Pro as I think even an iPhone 12. If I were planning on picking up these two phones, either an iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 11 Pro, I would kind of like getting an 11 Pro because I know I can get it for so much cheaper. If they were the same price, then obviously I would go for the 12 Pro. But because the 11 Pro is substantially cheaper than a brand new iPhone 12 Pro, it just kind of makes sense to pick up an 11 Pro if you're planning on even keeping this phone for the next couple of years. Even if you pick up the iPhone 11 Pro right now, it's still going to last you for an insane amount of time and it's not going to, like you work, you're going to end up upgrading this phone before you even go and, you know, and software on this thing like this thing's going to be lasting for an insane amount of time so you're probably going to be bored of it you're probably going to go and upgrade anyway but i think for now the iphone 11 pro is a solid pickup you're getting a beautiful display still a premium feeling body 100 percent. it still feels really good you're getting that you know face id sensor which is still cool i guess a very fast processor really good battery life on this phone uh, tremendous cameras like that's one of the best assets for it so i think this device is still completely worth it in 2021 so if you want to pick it up links will be down in the description below but that's really pretty much it if you guys have any other questions let me know in the comment section as well hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really discount so me so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well more importantly than everything also love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then